All right, and we're she recording. was wearing she was wearing um, uh, a, a one piece. piece advertising her boyfriend's business. Nice. Yeah. It was it, 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 like her her boyfriend's business is like a sexual uh, YouTube thing, and I'm like, I don't think you, I don't think you can do that on YouTube. <laughs> I don't know what do you. I wonder what, what exactly. What are you from? It is. Like, are you just like showing? Do you know what it's called? Uh, we could probably look it up. Look at the front of her onesie. I'm gonna look at the front. Do of her we need onesie. to bring up more 18 plus things on the podcast? <laughs> last time, uh, mm-hmm. uh, that was a uh, that was something last time. Welcome to the podcast, by the way. Hey, uh, don't we have to sync? No, this time we're doing it all through OBS, so oh. it's all like we're testing the mics this podcast. So we'll see how okay. it goes. So we okay. Well, there we go. Do you guys have? I know Vine hasn't existed for a while. Do you guys have a favorite Vine? I've got a few that I really like. I never really like watch. I never got oh. into Vine. Like I'll watch the no. compilations once in a while, but like uh, no, I, I never, I never got into it either. I never like downloaded the app, but I had neither. a few that I was like, I love this one. Yeah, yeah. that's just yeah. it speaks to you. The, I think. There's so many good ones, but one that really does speak to me, as you would put it, Peter, yeah. is the cheese of truth. I don't know if you guys have seen the cheese of truth. I don't think no, so. It's where a guy takes a piece of Swiss cheese and slaps it down on a newspaper, <laughs> and then he reads the first three words in the holes. So he slaps it down, and he's speaking in like a funny voice. Now we go to the cheese of truth. Immigrants cause cancer. <laughs> Here, we'll watch it. Oh, I don't know if I have the volume set up right. Of Did you have to scroll down for that? Yeah. Immigrants cause cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, it's so good. That's a good one. The cheese of truth. Yeah. I love the one where a guy's just on it, sitting on his front porch, and some girl walks by talking into her AirPods like she's oh, on yeah, a cell phone yeah. call, and they were roommates. Oh my God, they were roommates. Oh my God, they were roommates. <laughs> yeah. um, I love the one where the girl like vapes a huge cloud at like that high school party, and the guy looks at the camera and just goes, "Wow." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've seen that one. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so the streaking thing. Uh, the YouTuber is Vitaly Zordovsky. Vitaly. Uh, the girl who ran out is a like a model. Uh, what's her name? K- Kinsey Wolanski. K- these Kin- are Kinsey. these are very Eastern European names. Yeah, she's twenty two. She did. She looked a little bit older than twenty two. She did look a little bit older than twenty two, but uh, it was to promote her boyfriend's new porn site. Oh, hmm. porn site! Yeah. There we go. And uh, the name actually is familiar because I was just reading on, and uh, her boyfriend has actually been, I think banned from all major sporting events because he's streaked at so many of them <laughs> <laughs> what a what legacy yeah, right i was about to say what if she's 22 do you did it say how old her boyfriend is no no i, th- I think he's older so yeah i was about to a, i was about to say because i feel like i've heard name? that name before and like there's something about it that's ringing a bell and you think about it he's, like, he's a prankster youtuber yeah or something like, yeah. He's, so he's probably like way older than her i bet mm-hmm. Okay, he is twenty seven. Oh, that's not that's not very creepy then. I thought it was gonna be way creepier. Yeah. Of an age like difference. Thirty five. Yeah. I mean it's not it's not great, but it's not it's not awful. No. I mean good for him though. Sure. Yeah. Man, I saw I don't know why I did this, why I clicked on this. You know how on Snapchat they have like the, the clickbait stuff if you scroll oh, all, all the way, time. I click on those all the, the right. time. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I sometimes I watch them with you. There was one on there the other day about um, a couple with a bit of an age difference. Uh, so this is um, a 26-year-old woman married a 56-year-old man. Damn. Oof. And uh, she has like a, a YouTube channel as well uh, with him on, in some of the videos. She's like just like a regular like kind of like I guess fandom YouTuber. She does like Harry Potter stuff and like unboxings mm-hmm. and like maybe a little bit of beauty stuff. But they met each other when she accidentally rear-ended him in a car accident. Ah. I believe at the time, they were like maybe 23 and 53 or 24 and 54. But could you imagine marrying somebody who's 30 years older than you are? Somebody literally old enough to be your father. Like... 
Yeah, that's a mental blockade for me. I don't yeah. know if I could do that. And I mean, they seemed very... I don't, they, I don't know yeah. if I could do older, maybe yeah. younger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well... 30 years younger than you, so like I'm born zero, yet. a child, newborn, baby green is like, mm. <laughs> oh, that's, that's not what I meant. I meant oh. like I'm 50 something. Okay. Sure. But I mean, normally there's like a reason for it. This guy doesn't have money. This, this isn't her trying to get like brand new Gucci shoes and like a Prada bag out right. of it or anything like that. She's in it because she genuinely is in love with this guy. And they seem very sweet and everything like that. And, like, her family is, like, weirdly on board with it ah. all. Like, her brother's like, yeah, at one point I was like, this is kind of weird. But then I was like, he's a pretty nice dude. And when I saw the videos, like, yeah, this guy seems like a pretty nice dude. It's just, like, pretty weird that he decided mm. to marry someone 30 years younger than him. Yeah. What do you think the shock value is on that when they, like, go out? It's like, oh, yeah, that's, that's Father's Day thinking. night out? And it's like, oh, no, this is my husband. Yeah, no, <laughs> they were talking about that on the segment, actually, where it's like, Oh, you're, they were, I don't know, at Ikea or some shit. And it's like, oh, your dad's helping you move into your new place. It's like, no, we're, uh, we're moving in together. It's like, Ew. yeah. But also, like, I don't know. Everyone has, like, a different conception on how long you should date someone before you, like, mm. pop the question, right? I'm, like, a firm believer in, like, three years seems like a good point yeah. or longer. Some people are like, you know, we've been together one year, let's get married. Or we've been together two years. And like, that's too short. That's too short of a time. So like, like two years I could accept, yeah, but yeah. it's not, I don't think it'd be enough for me, but yeah, I, yeah. I think I'm on board with you with three but years. But think about this. She's 24. She's probably like fresh out of university, probably like doesn't do jack shit or whatever. This guy's been in the workforce for like 30 years, mm -hmm. like just being an average Joe, you know, it just, yeah. And He's then, got his retirement yeah, and all then, planned out. Exactly. And then they date for like a year and a half, two years. It's like, all right, I'm going to marry this 25-year-old. And then they're talking about, well, let's, uh, let's have children. The guy, at some point in his life, had a vasectomy, like before they were married, right? So the, I think, isn't vasectomies are reversible. They are, but yeah. They, oh, but they I were talking that. about reversing the process. And it's just like the doctor, the urologist was like, yeah, I mean, at this point, you're – even if we reverse it, your semen might not be potent enough. I'm like, potent enough. It's like, sorry to hear about your unpotent <laughs> semen. <laughs> I'm sorry you can't impregnate the woman who's 30 years your junior. Isn't there a uh, like a policy with vasectomies? I didn't know it could be reversed, first off, so I could be wrong on this. But like, I thought you had to freeze some of your sperm. Before. I don't think you have to. I don't, yeah, I don't think anyone would be like, you, or can't, like, you we, don't, don't have to, but it's, you're given the option. Oh, and then probably. Like, it makes sense. They put it in a fridge somewhere for you for like a couple decades. The Just idea of reversing a vasectomy, that, that's freaky in my brain. Just yeah, getting the like, vasectomy done. Did you, I don't know, you were in my biology 30 class. Remember when we saw the video of the vasectomy? I do remember. I that's like, one of those things that's burned in my yeah, brain. Up. And when they, <laughs> I don't know if you want it. Like the process just seemed like so bizarre to me because they literally like take the tube out, cut it with a scalpel and then just That's like it. they get it done. It's like, and they freeze everything. It's like, what? That was so easy. Just, they just went in. If you nicked like a, something like that in my body, I'd be fucking freaking out. <laughs> but no, it's fine. No. It's all good. And yeah. then they go back in and just stitch it up, I guess. I guess. Use a staple. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll freeze it up. You won't feel a thing. Sorry, we, you actually need a urethra donor. So <laughs> we can... Urethra donor. What a legend. Who yeah. would donate their no, urethra? No. <laughs> you ever hear about the guy in China who uh, cut off his wang and cooked it for a bunch of people? <laughs> it was like a delicacy. He, these people paid like tens of thousands of dollars to try human dick. His own dick. His own dick. He had to fry. <laughs> he, had, he had to handle his own dick. He had to season his own dick. Who knows it better? Maybe, maybe it was like one of those just weird, like rich, rich people things. Like you know how they go after rhino horn because it's supposedly yeah, an yeah. aphrodisiac, yeah. or they pour Coca Cola into their Chateau Petrus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that's a good story. Yeah, I know. Um, Maybe it's just one of those things. Maybe they like got a professional chef to do it and just like, here's a million dollars. Give us your penis. I don't know. I, it could be as far. Like I read this a long time ago. As far as I was aware, the guy was like an artist and a chef. So like the arts, oh. artsy bit of him was just like, 
This well, is some Hannibal Lecter shit so he we're was, getting into. So let me correct you. He was an artist, a chef, and an entrepreneur because he's like, I can get a ton of money if I cut off my penis, which I'm not really using, is probably what his thought yeah, process yeah. was. Yeah, because it's a... Uh... Because of Asian culture, right? And so it, it's what? Well, like, there's so because so many uh, they they had that the rule where you can only each family can only have one child, so everyone's having sons to pass on the name, and there wasn't oh, women. That's yeah. why the cyber dating is so popular in China and Japan. All these no, places. no, I, I I understand. I'm I'm aware of the of the one ch- the one child rule uh, in the in like. Early, like I think it was like from fifties to eighties. I think it was yeah. early nineties when they finally overturned the rule. But I don't understand how that relates to a man cutting off his own penis. He's just like, I am fine. Love, no one will love me. I'm just gonna do it. I might as well just get rid of this Wasn't, for some money. Uh, this must have been something that happened recently, though. This no, it was a couple of years All ago. Right, that's, as far I'll, as I'll more. research it. Man cuts off own penis. There was also, you know, while you're researching, now that I'm thinking about, it, there was another story where it's along the similar lines. The guy was like. He broke up with his girlfriend or something. He said, I will never find love. No one will ever love me. Blah, blah, blah. And he cut his thing off. And he realized, oh, I've made a mistake. Went to the hospital. And they're like, ah, uh, do you have your dick? He's like, no, I left it at home. He's like, okay, go back and get it. So he had to go back and get it. Come back. And by the time he got back, he's like, oh, it's too late. Wow. What a <laughs> mistake. <laughs> All right. Yikes. So here's uh, the article. Jesus. Japanese man, 22. Ooh. 22 is a little young for me to be cooking my own genitals. Um, That's it? May 2012. Oh, I thought it was way more. I lied to you. This man has no value <laughs> on his dick. I thought it was way more than that. Uh, uh, also, this is... this is So he's a Japanese. Voluntarily undergone... So he didn't cut it. He, he went through his surgery. He went through the proper channels. Yeah. I guess, okay, he's asexual. I didn't know that. No, it just says he's sexual. I thought it said he was Oh, a- no, it is asexual. Yeah. It volunteer. Okay. Scroll. Huh. Oh. Is cannibalism illegal? Yes. So it's then, absolutely like... absolutely illegal. Yeah, that's what I assumed, but, it's not like... A, well, actually, it's... It depends. It's... Uh, it's very... don't give consent. It's... <laughs> Apparently. I don't... I don't know. It's... It's tough to say because... I don't think any countries actually have like rulings in their like uh, in their criminal codes. Yeah. Because of it, because I'm okay. Anthropologist Jack is going to come out for a minute. <laughs> I have not researched cannibalism like extensively, but the little little uh, amount I have done uh, like about it, it's it has never been common like anywhere in human history. Like even like the outlandish stories you hear of people doing it in some cultures it's like very very infrequently if at all so cannibalism is like super taboo in basically all cultures like almost nobody has ever taken part in it yeah so, it's like it's such a wrong thing that it doesn't even need to be like written in law exactly, it's just right? like you don't do that and it's like i i think even other weird shit like necrophilia i think has laws against it mm. because that's something that mm. people actually do and are actually into People are like not really into cannibalism. That's right? very interesting. Yeah, because I think if you were to like cannibalize someone, you would get charged with like premeditated murder. I don't think there's. Uh, it would probably depend where you are. Yeah. Again, I don't. I've never like checked the <laughs> laws on cannibalism by individual country. Yeah, but yeah, just let me take out my logs of cannibalism. Yeah, cases. exactly. <laughs> right. So I don't know. Mm. I, it's very possible that there's just <clears throat> he he ultimately decided to split the meal. Between six guests, and I was I was a hundred thousand yen, so eighty Eight, euro, eight hundred euros, eight hundred euro. Sorry, so I was right in the, the expensive part. Oh, that's Just still not currency. that much, though. No, 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 not at all. Like, ah, oh, that kind of want to see pictures. Yeah, any pictures? Can you scroll down? Keep scrolling. See if there's anything in there. I, probably, I assume see, I, you want to like, see his severed cock. I want like, to I want to see how he. Served I don't know. It. Like yeah, well, see, like, this like, is the yeah. dish. Look, like he's got some fine wine. He like sautéed it with, or something. I don't know. Did, oh, oh. How I much? I can't imagine <laughs> this serving, repairing your own dick. That just blows my mind. There is probably something going on in this man's head. He's probably not all right. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. 
just just to guess. Yeah. But, but yes, I don't I don't know about the legality of, well, of that's just surgically thinking, removing like, your your own cock and balls and then serving them for profit. It's a very niche situation. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's a very and it's, <laughs> is the in that case it's like a federal law, right? So you're going to get prosecuted on like by the feds, right? Which I'm assuming. Well, right? so it's like all right. I guess the, the district defense attorney is going to make a case against you for chopping off your own dick and <laughs> serving it to people Do you think they who could are also willing, consenting. Charge them for like uh, prostitution because you're selling your body. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I'm, I'm also curious if because he had voluntarily undergone surgery to have them removed is what the article says. Yeah. So is, is that something that anyone can do? Can, can I be like, I don't want to have my penis anymore? Could oh. I have it surgically removed? Ask your doctor. I, I'm not I bet you to. can. Like, I'm not going to. Yeah. <laughs> you might just have to go to like America and Mexico or some shit. But Maybe I'm Mexico. sure you'll find some doctor who will do it for the right price. I guess. It just seems like just all around, it just seems like a very, very strange circumstance, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. But hey, I mean, good on the guy for doing what he felt was right. <laughs> Made yep. some money. Yeah. Made some money. How much, Peter? What I, you have, you, you, like you won that in Canadian? No. Yeah. Oh, you won how much for me? Yeah. Oh, no, no. Zero. <laughs> yeah. It won't happen. Yeah. That's, won't my happen. dick is priceless. Yeah. It's literally priceless. <laughs> there's, no, there's there's absolutely no, no amount of money. I mean, any body part, really. You can't pay me for a piece of my body. What about a pinky? I need my pinky to play guitar. What about your pinky toe? What about like something like a kidney? Because you can like live without a kidney. <sighs> I again, I don't know. I just feel like the the downsides far far outweigh whatever just for a little mon- pinky toe? monetary recuperation. Some rich guys turn up to you, he's like, "Listen, I just want to taste. I just want a little little piece. I want a piece. Dude, if he's eating it, then for sure, <laughs> yeah. no, no, you need my just kidney for like medical toe, reason. No pinky toe. Here's the thing, though. <laughs> well, then people are like, "Wow, how did your pinky this, toe? Yeah. I sold it for money, <laughs> so a rich man could eat it. You would do it." I Dude, mean, that's fucked up. Think yeah. of the story. The how much story? How much can they? How much did he pay you for? Oh, a couple million. You would do it for a couple million? Yeah. Well, then people not, there's so many people, more people would ask you where'd you get your money. Like, no, the first like any first no. impression of me would be ruined. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't get to know me over like a couple of months. But like, oh wow, you don't have a pinky. Yeah, I let someone eat it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not comfortable around this person anymore. I'm like, (laughs) well, yeah, at that point you have to lie. You have to make something up, right? Yeah. (laughs) Then you know it's like more toes disappearing. (laughs) (laughs) Oh shit. I'm a little low on funds here. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, and if you have the money to pay somebody for a piece of their body, you have the money to like pay people to kidnap and kill somebody who like, you know, is that goes against your morals. (laughs) <laughs> Eating the cannibalism is okay in your book, <laughs> but kidnapping and murder—that's a step too far. Especially if I'm soliciting the services of someone else to do yeah, it for no. me. Oh. Hey, I'm just throwing out hypotheticals. It's just extreme ones, but I've built this billion-dollar empire on my morals. I will not consume the flesh of somebody who I have paid to have killed and kidnapped. I need to go directly to the source. I need free-range human flesh. <laughs> Dude, we're going to get a monopoly on that market, man. <laughs> oh, that's so fucked up. <laughs> oh, but it exists. It's a thing I'm in the sure world, it, this yeah, story. Well, I don't know about that specific. I mean, the story is true. The but story, but. I don't know if there's some rich guy out walking around asking for body parts so he can eat it. I'm sure there's some fucked up well, rich maybe people. Maybe somewhere, right? Absolutely. Yeah. But you would do it, though, Graydon? You would, like, you would cut off? It would have to be a lot. I, I, like, it would, it would, I would take some serious. Like, I need a week to think about this. How much? How much? How much? I don't know. It would. It would definitely be way up there. I don't know. What about something that like absolutely doesn't matter? Like what if you had like, what if a rich person was like, we're going to surgically remove like your bottom two ribs or something like that. And I'm going to boil them down to, and make like a chicken broth or something. Oh, like why that. does he have to tell me that part? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> why, why, why does that matter? No, that that instantly becomes a no from me. Really? Like, I might consider it otherwise, but no. If I find out you're one big chicken broth of my ribs, <laughs> no, I don't trust you. No, no. <laughs> no. If you just want my ribs out, then maybe. What? You want rinse his bliss? You wouldn't want to know what the, you want your ribs for? No. Anyone who wants my ribs, I, it's it. That's not a good thing. They yeah. want a piece of a human body. No. <laughs> that's but see the other thing I consider is who's like is this gonna be like a qualified doctor taking it out or is this some sketchy guy on the street in like an alley just like all right <laughs> here's some heroin now we're just gonna go to town on your ribs I guess it depends on the morality of the man <laughs> paying the money it's like I don't trust real doctors I need my back street vendor would you kidnap someone and murder them because if so that's that's too far <laughs> yeah that's too far I'm just, I'm just saying like if a rich guy comes up and wants to eat part of you, there are, it sounds shitty, but there's a million people that he could pay to have kidnapped yeah. and like nobody would be any the wiser, you know? Yeah. No, if I he know. really wanted human flesh, there are groups of marginalized people out there that a rich person could easily take advantage of. He doesn't need to go up to you and be like, I you have, a, you kids. have some divine thighs. <laughs> <laughs> Let me eat your leg. I like my. I want my leg. I wouldn't do it for any, for my leg. Lots of people live happy lives missing one or both legs. Yeah, but I like my legs. Me personally, he has nice I like legs. To keep them. Yeah, that's why the rich guy wants. <laughs> yeah, <them>. exactly. <laughs> Green knows his assets. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't expect the podcast to, yeah. no, but, to get on but this then, topic. Like, huh? who's, who's doing the cooking in, in this situation once once it's been surgically removed? I mean, Dude, you don't, who, you don't, how are you going to find a chef or a, a butcher, a, a chef, anybody this in the Japanese cul- man? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just anyone in the culinary industry is like, oh yeah, I could definitely like break that leg down into a few like good human leg fillets. Again, you don't have. A, there's nobody no on. One. No one. No. Nobody that you want to associate knows how to butcher a human leg for edible purposes. <laughs> I just imagine like scrolling through LinkedIn and then you see that on someone's like experience can butcher human body parts. Just, I'm just add that to the watch list. <laughs> All I'm thinking of now is Hannibal Lecter. Like yeah. Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. That's a great movie. It's a great. Movie. Good movie. I read I read the first book. I have the other two, but I just haven't got around to it. Oh yeah, it's hard to find time for things you want to do. <laughs> the bus is where I do stuff like that. Mm. Did you guys see a uh, kind of somewhat not nah, kind of different topic, but um, like the most body modified man in the world is uh, on the run from cops. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. And I saw that, and I was like, but. But you're so easily identifiable. Yeah. <laughs> like he's gonna wear, he's gonna put on a bunch of foundation. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Like, look up a picture of this dude because he's a uh, he's Ooh. really something. Wow. Yeah. You uh, you weren't lying. Um, and he's super young too. I think he's like 19. There he is. Let's just go into yeah, images. Just go to Ethan images. Bramble. <clears throat> Do you know if that is that him? That, that, you... The first one is him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're, uh, yeah. yeah. Just look for, like, the, the human white walker. <laughs> yeah. So he's got his eyes are tattooed black. Uh, he's got the ear stretchy thing. His tongue is split. He's wow. got tattoos all up on his face. This guy. That guy. That's the first, uh, like, I saw him, and, and I was like, what? what's with his eye? And then that's how I learned you can tattoo an this eye. This is someone I would never mess with. You want my wallet? Here you go. <laughs> This is also a convict. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's been charged with murder or something. You got, are you guys familiar with incels? Uh, I, I think, think so. I've, it sounds super it, familiar. Yeah. It's like... It's, is that the Chad and Stacy yeah, thing? Yeah. The, they're the like guys who call themselves involuntary celibates. Because oh, they, yes. they can't get laid and they hate women because of it. <clears throat> and they're like, the, all the Chads and the Stacys out there... Are Hoarding sex because human evolution or tribalism or something like that. And Hoarding sex. Yeah. And us regular guys who aren't attractive can't, can't have sex. And so they develop like terrible, terrible things. And a lot of it started on 4chan. 
and other message boards and stuff like that. But I read an article about them the other day <clears throat> about certain members of like the incel community who go to like huge, huge lengths to get major body modification and plastic surgery done to like make themselves look more Chad, yeah, more manly. Oh. Yeah. Um, and basically just like fuck themselves up in the process. It's, it was pretty nuts. They're pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, a lot of them have, like, pretty bad body dysphoria, and they're like, mm. I have such a weak chin, and my my features aren't strong enough, so that's why women won't fuck me. It's like, women won't fuck you because you're a terrible person, yeah. basically. Pretty much. There's a, We had that incident a while ago in Toronto where a guy ran a bunch of people over on the, mm, yeah. on the street. He, he was in he was no. one of those Oh, guys, he was yeah. one of those. That's yeah. probably where I first heard about it. And yeah. that's, that's why he... Like, so, yeah, that's how I learned about them because mm-hmm. they, he was like, like why'd you do this? He was like, all oh, the Stacy's won't have sleep with me right. because of the Chads. Yeah. It, and uh, there were a few other incident, incidences like that uh, in the States, but the Toronto uh, van attack is the one that really propelled them into the spotlight. Yeah. So, yeah. It's gross, man. It's mm-hmm. weird. It, yeah. It's, it's messed up. It's crazy the the ideas people just hold so strongly to. I know. Like, it's it's bizarre and scary. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. So. What's uh? There was somebody I was just looking at it today, but I don't know what it is exactly. Um, there's a Russian guy who's really famous for it about body modification, where you just inject something into your muscles to make it pop, make it balloon up. Oh yeah. I'm gonna try to find it that, for because some... uh, they look fucking stupid like you don't even look muscular you just look stupid <laughs> balloon man this just reminded me of a story i read on uh, ctv a while back uh this man he uh he had he's been having like back pains for a long time so he went to the hospital he, got, he had to go to the er event because it got so bad and what doctors found out he was doing is he was injecting his own semen into his bloodstream for like years on end and it was creating like it, it really fucked with his body and like caused his back like all, like some growth in his back I believe and they're like oh, why why did you wh- wh- why yeah. why and he's like oh I read it somewhere it was good for your health and so they're just like no no it's not and then he left it's when after they, get they the told them that the euthanization needle out and they're like but yeah there's some man who's who's doing that How daily you wow. inject yourself with semen he, you're that, like that blew my mind when I read that I was like. The things we know because of the internet. I could have lived without this. Yeah. It's a gift and a curse. Oh, he really is. Oh, yeah. As soon as I heard, like, injecting yourself something, my mind was just like, don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. forget I mean, you know, that's the one thing. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't fuck with the, like, drugs or anything like that anyway. But especially nothing I have to inject. Yeah. I ain't doing that shit, Chief. No. It ain't happening. It just seems inertly wrong like yeah. it just seems like a bad idea i don't know yeah. if i could like physically do it yeah anyway no uh, i think it would be really tough like i don't i don't have the balls to like take like fucking light up a spoon with like yeah. this dangerous chemical in it extract it with a needle tie shit around my arm to like staunch it and then inject myself with it i feel like the mental fortitude like yeah. i think you have to be in a bad place oh, yeah for sure to like go that far <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't have the balls to do that. I don't think. No, but some people are just like, oh fuck it, I'll try it. Yeah, and I'm like, ah, no, 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 no. There are even like normal people I know who've maybe not done harder, like too hard stuff like that, but people who've like done cocaine a yeah. few times, and it's yeah. just like the first time you do it, it fucks with your cardiovascular health like so heavily that like oh, I can't. Imagine. No, I, I I can't fucking do that shit. No, I like. I like my systems yeah. to function yeah. as God I, I intended. Like, I like it when my heart doesn't explode. Thank yeah. you very much. That's really good. That's always a good day. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever seen the the people who get their nose cartilage removed? Yes. 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 Fuck That's those people. Creepy. Yeah. Uh, fuck those skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> those skelly boys. Like I imagine that. Like if you're gonna go all out, if you're gonna be the most tattooed, body modified man in the world, get your nose cut off. Go. Just do the full send. With your with your eyes and your face tattoos and, and your split tongue, just get rid of the nose. Why not? Yeah, I don't know. Is there any like extreme body modification you guys would do at all? 
that I would do. Yeah. Like out of all of them, like what's the one where I guess appeal most to you? I don't know. Uh, scrotum reducement surgery. Oh yeah. You really struggle <laughs> you with a, that. A massive yeah. scrotum. Yeah. No, it's just, it's really hard. You know, it's just, it's just, it's too much. Not, not a lot of people are aware of, a. Of, a, of the condition. Are you wearing, wear, raising a d- awareness? Yep. Nice. Wow. That's totally real. <laughs> the, the furthest I could ever go is getting a tattoo, basically. Yeah. And, like, below the neck. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> and, like, nothing on the hands or anything like that. Ever, uh, would you consider, like, uh, like, some couples, instead of getting the rings, they do the tattoo around there? You know, it's funny. Uh, I have thought about that in the instance that I, you know, get married at some point. Because I have, like, this weird fear of getting stuff caught on my fingers. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I I hate it. I hate when, I like, I accidentally, like, slide my finger into something. I, like, automatically recoil and, like, try to pull it out. So, like, with your keys, like, the key ring, do you ever stick your... So, okay. So, like, something that's, like, flimsy, like a key ring, I'm totally fine with. Like, that... That doesn't bother me at all. Okay. But like harder metals or like stuff that's thicker or longer that I feel like I could actually get stuck or could potentially like harm me, like freaks me out. Nice. Like I bet if I were to just like, if I put this like past the knuckle, I would start to feel like, a little, like, like I'm uh, unsettled. <laughs> like I don't yeah. like Have that. you ever got your finger stuck in something? Did the fear come from somewhere? I did get a, f- a finger like temporarily caught in a ring once mm. when I was a kid, but we just put soap and water on it and got it off. Yeah. It was not an issue. Um, yeah. One that happens sometimes is I like go to undo my, my seat belt and like a finger gets caught in like the seat belts where it like clicks in. Mm. Yeah. And I like automatically like recoil and pull it out playing slide guitar for, it was a challenge for a while until oh, yeah. I got over that. Oh you have to put the, the yeah. Slide on your yeah. Finger. Yeah. And also sometimes you hear stories of like, this is something it happened to I think it was Jimmy Kimmel uh, a few years ago. Oh yeah, ago. the deed loving. Yeah. yeah, where his wedding ring, he like fell and it got stuck on something and it almost took his entire finger off. Oh mm-hmm. shit! And I think of that and like I that sounds fucking awful. So yeah, yeah. There's a uh, yeah. There's a I saw something while we're on the topic. I keep I'm, I'm weird. I'm I'm throwing us all into these like weird things, but so. Uh, I learned the term deed loving from something like that. Like some dude was jumping out of a construction equipment and he got his hand caught on something and it just ripped all the skin off of his hand oh. and like exposing all the thing. It, like it just came off in one piece. And it was just hanging there. And I'm like, Ugh. Oh, I can just imagine just like looking, being like, Oh, I mean, that would be awful. But I mean, with the right medical treatment, you would, oh, you'd, you'd, you'd be fine. You could fix it. But just the initial like shock. Ah. Yeah, that would, that would not be good. That'd probably be like pain a painful thing to do as well. Oh, yeah. Like Oh, hundred percent. Like you're ripping tissue off of your body. Yeah. Then the recovery, like you'd spend Oh. Like you just never even do that something. again. Yeah, yeah, really. You wouldn't even be able to Ugh. Um, um But yeah, my future wife is like not going to like me that very much. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, so I can never wear a wedding ring. About those rings. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I can wear a necklace. <laughs> <laughs> give me the I mean, you can do that. You give me put the, the, yeah, ring, the ring on, the on a necklace. Yeah. That, that would work. I know some people who do that. Yeah. Unless she has like some super traditional yeah. uh, wife or something. Yeah. And maybe if I, if I use like a, a different material, like maybe if it was a wooden ring or like mm. some people have like tungsten, tungsten or like some other stuff that's yeah. a little bit thicker and longer. So it's not like this band and something that I think is a little bit li- easier to like break or something like that. But I do like the tattoo idea. I always get, you know, yeah. concerned over separating at some yeah. point, but yeah, I do that, like that idea. That's the thing though, right? Because like, I was like, oh man, the tattoo makes sense. But also like, if I ever divorce this woman, I have a tattoo on my ring finger. No, no taking that one off. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Imagine that'd be painful too. A finger? Probably. I don't know if I could also just answer your question from a long while ago. I don't know if I could do any body modifications. No. I don't, I don't know if I could do anything. I don't even like piercings. Yeah. Like, people yeah. get like eyebrow piercings and stuff like that or like no. I mean, I guess it depends on the person. Yeah. Like some people can pull it off better than others, but then yeah. people go too far and like, yeah, the most I think I maybe could do like a earring on my ear, but like 
I, I, uh, well, I wouldn't like, go any farther. Even when people stretch their ears, I look at them. Oh, and I like, hate you that. look like a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, where do you go from there? Like, at some point, you're gonna stop. I assume. If but I, then you just have these f- flap. Like, yeah. what do you do there's, then? There's no, there's no growing back. Yeah. Yeah. If I ever meet anyone like that, I'm fucking taking a padlock and locking it around their ear and running away. <laughs> so, well, warning to you two. Well, I just told you I'm never gonna. Yeah, do I know, it. but you know, oh, just in that case would things hurt change, so bad. I'm gonna just do this it. metal <laughs> weight. Yeah. Just be like, well, you're stupid, <laughs> your stupid fucking ear. And I, I mean, I support like body modifications on like a cultural basis if it's something mm. like from the culture like where the, you're like from the neck extensions sure, sure yeah, yeah that's like yeah 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 like the yeah, sure. africa but I if think. but if you're like a white person who's just like hey i'm gonna do this thing that people have been doing in their culture for thousands of years because it makes me look cool and edgy or whatever it's like get fucked basically mm. that's yeah. my opinion yeah, I, I don't find them yeah. attractive yeah, or appealing the, at all. Because there are cultures around the world that like do the ear stretching thing. Yeah, because that because people with stretched ears put like the plugs in them or whatever, right? So, yeah, I remember reading up on the history, like how because I was I was you know I was curious like how yeah. does how does something like that start? But yeah. of course, it has a cultural mm-hmm. significance. Yeah. Or if, or like uh, the Maori people in like um, in the Southern Pacific, like around like the New Zealand area and stuff like that. It's very cult- cultural for them to get a lot of tattoos and often face tattoos. Like, oh yeah, I don't, I don't care if it's cultural and like whatever. But if you're just like some dickhead getting tattoos of like another people's culture, it's like get fucked, basically. Yeah. There was this woman who, uh, when I'd be going to school in the morning, she'd be coming home from work wherever she worked. But yeah, she had this massive face tattoo. It always just. Just to send me on alert, essentially, you know, just be like, oof, oof, I don't, I don't want to fuck with you. I don't want to, oof. It's just immediate first impression, you know. I just don't understand the appeal. Like, how do you meet someone then go see their family with a face tattoo? Yeah. <laughs> I just bring that girl home. <laughs> like, mom, dad, meet. Punk rocker number three. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's like, what if you were like, uh, like a, a 22 year old girl or something like that. And then, okay, so my, my boy, new boyfriend is a singer and he's a really nice guy, but he's, he's got a little bit of, he's got some stuff going on. And then you bring Post Malone into your, <laughs> your living room. Like, and your parents don't know who Post Malone is. Yeah. But, they just see this guy with face tattoos and long hair. Yeah, they don't recognize the millions of dollars when they see Post Malone walk into you their know home. But at that point, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care how much money you have. Gross, get out. <laughs> I don't. I don't want anything to do with you. Well, I mean, I guess. I guess it depends on the parents, right? Yeah, yeah I like, guess. There's like, a lot okay, of parents out there. Yeah, it's no qualification for being a parent. If Post Malone is a nice enough guy, I'll get past the yeah the, how weird he looks. I guess. Right? If he treats Still. my daughter well, <laughs> you, you can date Still. Post Malone. <laughs> Ah, that's weird though. I don't know. Yeah, but like mumble rappers with like the face tattoos, they go hard. They get out out of my house. (laughs) How dare you bring that home? Imagine like all they do is mumble rap when they talk and stuff. Just like what? What are you saying? Speak up, (laughs) young man. I am talking to you. (laughs) Flashes his millions of dollars. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand mumble rap. One of the big mumble rappers just like got sentenced to prison, I think, and he's like a oh. like, year or two younger than us. Yeah, Takashi Nine or oh, yeah, six whatever. Nine, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He had, it's crazy. He was like doing a bunch of gang activity and also was like running an illegal weapons ring with this gang. And then he was just mumble rapping on the side. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. I was like, have fun in prison. Yeah. Like, jeez. Uh, and then, think pe- one, yeah. like, <sighs> and then people on Twitter were like, free my man. He didn't do nothing. I was like, no, he was, no, he, he was, was dealing a, weapons. Was very bad he admitted person. to doing a lot yeah. of things. He's young. You got to give him space to make mistakes. What kind of mistakes yeah, are we yeah. going to allow it's here, all, though? <laughs> yeah. Like, I feel like maybe we don't forgive the mistakes that put weapons onto the streets for the mm-hmm. purpose of killing people. 
feel like maybe that's a big mistake that we that's a pretty that big we mistake. don't we don't just forgive. Well, yep. then once he started making money, I'm sure he had the ability to like at least somewhat get out of it. Exactly. Like like, like once you become a famous mumble rapper and you have millions of dollars and you're bragging about it. Why are you still dealing weapons with this game? Because once you're in, you're in, man. Sure. There's no getting out. Sure, you can maybe still do some stuff on the side. Why are you like, why are you like culpable in this? Why are you still close enough mm. to it all that? You're popping off about this. Yeah. It's like, what? they got a lot of eyes on you, man. Seriously. And then he like ratted on a bunch of people, and now he's still going to jail. Oh, man, you better be going to safe jail. <laughs> mm. <laughs> He just not mumble rap his way out of this. <laughs> 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 you think he, you think he mumble rap can ratting people out? <laughs> <laughs> the cops are like, what? <sighs> Fuck. You know, roll it back. Can we slow it down? <laughs> they had to bring in like a linguist to like decipher it. Like, they had to bring in like a fourteen-year-old boy. Can, can you tell us what he's saying? It's like, oh my god, he just snitched on the entire gang. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, he goes to safe prison, but oh, it's not safe once he gets out. No, nope. once he's out of there, <laughs> once he's once he's out, he no, should go back to go running buy an drugs and drugs and stuff. Yeah. No, but once you've ratted on people, oh no, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I'm assuming rough. I don't know much about gang dynamics. If I was in a gang, I wouldn't trust no rat. Yeah, no rat, <laughs> no rat. Uh, yep, I would. Yeah. This podcast has been, been all, all over the place. place. All over the place. Yep. From cannibalism to mumble rapping. Yep. <laughs> what a title. Yeah. That's a great title. Jared? Yeah. That's a great title. Right there. Yeah. Do it. Is Jared yeah. Jared I wonder if his plane is left yet. Jared's on his oh, way to well, Australia. I think it left yeah. it, uh, yeah. Oh, to Australia. Yeah, yeah. No, he he flew to Vancouver. His flight left at uh, five thirty, so Yeah, he's probably yeah, uh, he's, leaving right about now. Yeah. I, Have fun, Jared. Yeah. I mean, I imagine flights like that, there's probably quite often layovers in Vancouver, so I think yeah. his layover is in the other place, wherever Auckland, oh. and then he was flying to Perth but or I something. Mean, That's a lot of stops. So he would have gone to Vancouver, and then He's, got on to the other plane, right? Because yeah. I don't think there's nothing goes direct from Calgary to Australia. I no, imagine. Yeah. no, Not that's yet. quite the flight. Yeah. No, anyway, yeah, just direct to uh, like yeah. Gatwick and Amsterdam. Nice. I think, yeah, KLM does that. Can you go direct to Frankfurt? Because Frankfurt's a huge hub, and I know that there's uh, I know I've passed through Frankfurt a number of times, but I'm not sure if I always have to make a connecting flight to get there. Where is Frankfurt? It's, it's, uh, a, it's Western Germany. Okay. Germany. Yeah. yeah, if you travel through Germany, odds are you'll fly into Frankfurt. It's a massive airport. Yeah. Like, huge. Like maybe one of the biggest in the world, if yeah. I were to guess. Yeah. I want to go travel in Europe. It's on the bucket Europe list. Europe is fun, man. It is. Yeah, it's high up there on the bucket list for me. Mm -hmm. Make it happen. Yeah. It's just, it's just, I'm, I'm resistant to spend money. Yeah. It's uh, depends how long you're there for. If you're there for for a few weeks, you can budget it out pretty well. But once you kind of get into like the month, two month long trips it starts to oh boy does it start to get yeah pricey. i can't even imagine yeah so <clears throat> it looks like condor air condor flies direct from mm. calgary to frankfurt and then um air canada has a hmm. not lufthansa no not lufthansa hmm. well there you go there you go peter for the low, low cost of $2,500, you can fly to Frankfurt. Nope. Nope. Is that a one-way? I think that's a one-way. Ah! <laughs> Hold on. Let's find out. Yeah, nope. I don't know. That's a round trip. Okay. Okay. That's better. That's mm -hmm. better. Yep. That's about what I would expect to pay for a trip like that. $1,250 both uh, for uh, just get you to Frankfurt and another yeah. twelve fifty to get you back. And that's just the start. Mm -hmm. I imagine there's cheaper ways to get over there. With like oh, if you bounce around, and yeah, yeah, you can definitely get it. But I like oh, when it comes to shit like that. I just rather fly direct. I'll Honestly, like, I think I'd be the same. I'd rather spend a little bit more money and just save myself the hassle. Yeah. Depends how much of a saving it was. Honestly, I th I think if you get to like Heathrow in London, 
then getting into the rest of Europe is just so cheap. Oh, yeah. once you're in Europe, it's yeah. so like they have a, uh, what's their, what are they there? Yeah, there's an airline in there. Euro Air or something like that. Yeah. Where it's just super, it's like a couple hundred bucks. Oh, if you want to really? fly anywhere within Europe. Nice. I took it when I was there last time. And there's a, I, I'm looking at the options now. The options were like they give you the initial one and then you just like that little arrow. Then mm. the little arrow said longer or more expensive. <laughs> and I was like, huh. What's in there? What's in there? Do you guys know how much it costs to fly like premium as well? I don't know the cost, but I know it's a lot. Oh, it's a Isn't lot. it an extra like like a thousand, two thousand dollars more? It can. De- it depends. <sighs> no, I looked it up a while ago because I was curious. Flying like first, like business class, first class to Australia and back round trip, it's fifteen thousand dollars. Oh, oh. See. What has to be on that flight to make it worth it? You get what the, could possibly... You get the pod seats. They give you a nice fancy meal. You can have unlimited booze. $15,000? If you're I, flying business class, you can afford... I, I have to say, I have flown business, first class, whatever you want to call it a few at, times. It's, SFI, yeah. It's very, very nice on those long trips, but... But $15,000 nice? I wasn't yeah. paying. Yeah, I mean, I'm, but it's, it, was, it is way nice. It was not on my dollar, so yeah. I will tell you, I could never afford such a luxury. Oh my goodness, that'd be the whole vacation just yeah. in the airplane. Yeah, but I mean, I've also flown economy across the ocean mm-hmm. on a a few times. So yeah, I mean, it, it's not a fifteen thousand dollar difference. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, yeah, it's just the luxury. I mean, it's super nice yeah. to be able to like lay back and you got like the big screen and mm-hmm. it's, you're like you're this secluded pod. Yeah. It's definitely a luxurious experience. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it it makes the trip, the, you know, the twelve or fifteen hours more comfortable. Yeah, depending on how long the flight is. But I, when I'm on planes nowadays, I sleep like all of the way, anyways. So I can't sleep on planes. That's my no. problem. I just can't do it. Yeah, but you have a Nintendo Switch now, so you don't need to sleep <laughs> on true. planes. That's true. Um, if I was like, if I flew on planes a lot, I'd absolutely buy a Switch. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I yeah. Um, have you guys heard of Air Emirates? Yeah, fly Emirates. Yeah. yeah. Is that like Middle East? Yeah. Okay. They yeah, got yeah. like the super times seven first class Ooh. where you get like your own, like it's as big yeah. as the space. You get like, your you get like the your, like oh, 60 inch damn. TV and think... like a bathroom and a shower. That must be quite the plane. About, about $22,000 US, I think. Yeah. But I, it, it looks real nice. Like you get a bed. I just can't imagine some of the, mo- the money these big corporations must spend. Yeah. Like holy shit! Look up. Let's let's go look at let's get this face tattoo off the screen. Let's look at some air. Emirates. Oh, that's right. That's still on the screen. <laughs> let's look at I, some. I watched a YouTube video a couple years ago of a guy who like spent all of his points because he was like a frequent flyer. Oh yeah. He was like just for the YouTube video. He's like, I'm gonna spend all of the travel points I've accumulated and like buy a, this a year, ticket. Likely meaning like, that they would like build many more. Going on Some analysts question the that, room. if there's really that demand. They also wonder if Tesla really has he, the like, capability to do that. Just...